Hello everybody and welcome to another live English class. I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. I'm loving the live classes at the moment. I think <laughs> I'm just having, I just have a great, a great time in the live classes. I have a lot of fun. It's, um, it's really great. So yeah, before I start, I just want to say a couple of things. So the first thing I want to say is again, thank you to all of my patrons, all of the people who support me. Um, and as I said, I'm uploading daily videos, words of the day and other things to my Patreon page and it's free. So go and have a look, please go and check out the videos on Patreon. It's like just to help you, you know, with English, like every day. Um, what else? The Facebook group. This weekend, the Facebook group passed, passed 10,000 members. 10,000 members. And, you know, the total number is not just important, is not important. You know, nobody cares. You have a million members, 10,000 members. It doesn't matter. The important thing is how many people are participating. And in the Facebook group, the participation is crazy. It's like 60% of the people are posting and sharing and it's great. So a revolution is happening right now in the Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group, please go and join. Um, and that's it. And, and check it out. Look, um, also, if you want, you can buy some really attractive, high quality Kangaroo English merchandise. The links for all of these things are down below. Um, okay, so because, because it's a beautiful sunny day, it's Monday, it's a great start to the week. I'm feeling happy. Let's play some more games. Yeah, <laughs> let's play some more games. So who do we have? We have Sahalapa, Golovanoga, uh, Ushantha's here again, Adam's here, Mohammed, Alejandro, Petrus, Ahmed, Epic Fail. Epic Fail's here. Eileen Cheng, Marco Shiba, um, Ashgat, Natalia Cordoba, hello, Musin Tene, um, Devika, or Devika, uh, Dothe Alma, Dotche Alma, um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Julgens, Mustafa El Dardi, Carlos, Toro, uh, Carlos Torres, um, Abdo, uh, Nagaraj, Simona, Anna Rita, um, Rogelio's here, uh, Yongwen Park, just so many people. It's brilliant. Thank you for, for coming. Um, now, today we're going to play a game called Sort It Out. Sort it out. Basically, you have to put things in order. I'm going to give you a list of four things. No, five things. A list of five things. And you have to put the five things in the correct order. Uh, it's easy. The, 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 the rule, the, the, the game is easy. So, here we go. Um... Let's start with this one. So, <clears throat> hi Gosha, hello Isa, Jen Bat, hello Rainspray. Cool name, Rainspray. <laughs> Nicholas Nunes, hello. Um, okay, so what you have to do is you have to put these, these things in order of quantity, from most to least. Most to least. Okay, so the most to the least. So the first thing is olive trees. Olive trees, quite common. There's lots of them in Greece, in Spain, in Africa. Olive trees. The next thing is vegetarians. Vegetarians. 
How many vegetarians? Hmm. The next one is humpback whales. Um, hump, hump is the hump, yeah. You know, like a camel, a camel has one or two humps. So the humpback whale, it's a whale with a big hump on his back. Humpback whales. The next one is cells in a newborn baby. Cells in a... Cells in a newborn baby. See, this is, this is an adjective, newborn, and also a noun, a newborn. It's newly born. And finally, how many poker machines in Las Vegas? You know the poker machines, you press the button, you put the money in and you press the buttons. So, which in the world, which, ha well in the world, no, which has the most quantity? Olives, trees, vegetarians, humpback whales, cells in a newborn, or poker machines in Las Vegas. So you have to put them in the correct order, from most to least. <laughs> Um, it's not raining, it's not raining in here right now, but it can rain at any moment, and I like to be prepared. <laughs> it's because it's, I'm, I'm, I'm between temperatures, so it's like, it's not, it's not t-shirt, but it's not jacket, so it's rain jacket weather. Um, okay, so Anna Rita says, cells in a newborn, then vegetarians, then olive trees, then poker machines, then humpback whales. Ooh. Uh, Marcos sells cells, poker machines, olive trees, vegetarians, and then humpback whales. Ooh. And... <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I think it's... I think it's difficult. Hello, Gerson. Nice to see you again. Okay, so let's have a look at the correct answer. So, number one is cells in a newborn baby. There are 26 billion, 26 billion cells in a newborn baby. Uh, next is olive trees. Olive trees, there are 800 million olive trees around the world. That's a lot of olive trees. I had no idea. Um, the next one is vegetarians. There's 220 million, 220 million vegetarians. Uh, next is poker machines in Las Vegas, 100 and 50,000 poker machines in Las Vegas. And finally, humpback whales, 80,000. 80,000 humpback whales. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're not just learning English, we are learning random and strange facts about the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many rappers in the world? Well, in the world there is a lot of rappers, but there's only one Rick Ross. The most dangerous man in rap. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so Marco got the first one and the last one. Um, am I going to do a live class about idioms? Um, well, I could do, I could do, but you know, the thing is that there are a lot of idioms, like a lot, like thousands. So 
I think you would have to look at them in, in categories. Um, but I, I, yeah, maybe, probably. I can, absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, well, um, one second, one second. Just, just so that you have an idea, um, this is my Oxford um, Idioms Dictionary for learners of English, okay? And there. <laughs> just so you have an idea of how many idioms we're talking about, okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You see, there's a lot of idioms. How, how many does it say? I don't think it gives a total, but... Um, uh, there you go. Over 10,000 idioms. And that's in here, right? So, um, so yeah, it's, it's complicated. Um, so, but but I, I, I will teach you some idioms right now. But first, there's, there's uh, some people here with some questions. So, um, <laughs> so... Muskan Ali wants to know the difference between then and then, and I'm just going to answer this very quickly, okay? Oops. They're two, two completely different words. Then is to make a comparison. I am taller than you, okay? Or he is more intelligent than her, okay? It's for comparisons. This is to talk about time. I did this and then I did this. Okay, so comparisons, time. Totally different. Okay? Okay. Um, hello Pasquale, great to have you in, um, great to have you in, uh, in, um, in, in class, of course. Um, so, well, uh, let's, if, if, I think a good, a good way to study idioms, personally, I think, is by category, right? So, um, for example, this, this book has a great section on, on idioms related to, to sailing. Because um, idioms come from human experience. And in, in the past, you know, English-speaking countries, they did a lot of sailing. They were, they, were big, they were big on the sailing thing, you know, sailing around the world. So there's lots of sailing idioms. Uh, for example, um, if, I, if I draw a picture of a boat, I can give you... Look at this chalk. Come on. Let, let, let me give you an example of what I mean. It's my beautiful boat. Uh, okay, so uh, okay. So um, I don't know if you know any vocabulary about boats. So we have um, this is the the sail. Okay, so the sail is is an important part of the boat, right? Yeah. And then you know the wood. The wood on top is called the deck. This is the wood, you know, where the people walk. Uh, yes, like a sailplane. Uh, this thing, this thing here, which makes the boat steady, is called a keel. Keel. Uh, what other vocabulary do they use here? Uh, okay, um, uh, okay. If if it's a Viking, a Viking boat, and it has these, you know, where you're like, <laughs> everybody, <"Ugh>, heave ho. <laughs> okay, they are called or. 
That's an awe. What a great word. Awe. <laughs> it sounds... <laughs> it's like if I, if I stick something in your eye, like, awe. <laughs> or, or when you wake up in the morning and you're, you know, when you're old and you're like, awe. Oh. It's awe. Or keel, deck, sail. Uh, what else? Um, uh, okay, so then we have some 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 vocabulary for the water. Uh, okay, so we have um, so this <laughs> this this is a, a wave. Wave. Yeah, and that's why this is wave. Because you see, it's like the action. <laughs> okay, a wave and um, uh, what else is in here? Uh, okay, uh, this is obviously the ocean. The ocean, of course, the ocean. And uh, one final thing. One final thing. Um, this is this is the port. You know, the port where you, you park you park the boat is the port. So, idioms. Idioms. Let's, let's look at the idioms here. So, um, okay. The, the, the job, the job of this part of the boat is to make the boat steady. So the boat doesn't do this, okay? It keeps the boat steady. So we use this to talk about, to talk about things that are stable. So you can say, um, the economy is on an even keel, an even keel, on, on an even keel. This is an idiom, okay? And it means that it's stable. It's stable. It's not moving like this. It's stable. Our relationship is on an even keel. My studying is on an even keel, etc. Okay? Sailing. So, sail is the object and the verb is sailing. The, um, not the verb, the, the activity. Okay? The activity. <laughs> okay? So, and if the sailing is good, if... If, if it's a, a beautiful day and everything on, on the boat is perfect and, okay, if it's a good day, we, we call it smooth sailing or plain sailing. Smooth. Smooth sailing or plain sailing. So that means that it's good. Everything's perfect. It's sailing perfectly. And you can use this to talk about things that are going well or not going well. So you could say, I, um, I tried to open a business and it was really perfect. It was smooth sailing. Or I tried to open a business and it wasn't plain sailing. It was really difficult. Okay. Okay, then uh, deck. Deck. Now, um, I need to make a little, a little diversion. A little diversion. Okay. Um, in in English, we have a thing called in in all languages, you have a thing called metonymy. Metonymy is when you substitute one thing to represent another thing. So, for example, um, if, if I'm a teacher, you could, you could call me chalky. Because my job is to use a chalk, chalky. So you can say, ah, the chalky over here. So you're substituting me, the teacher, for this object. Okay? Or... If, if, I'm very, if I'm very intelligent, you can call me the brain, <laughs> right? So you could say, hey, um, we, need to, we need to bring in the brain, the brain. So this part of my body 
substitutes all of me. Okay. Now, on a boat, on a boat, the most important thing are these. Your hands. Okay. Because the hands do the work on the boat. They pull the ropes and they turn the wheel and, and everything, the hands. So people who work on a boat are called hands. Okay. And so if it's an emergency, imagine it's an emergency. Okay, guys, we, oh my God, we are being attacked by pirates. Come, come and help. Pirates are attacking. We say, all hands. All hands on deck. Come on, everybody. All hands on deck. I want all of the people on the boat. Hey, hey we're, we're all on the hill. We're all here to help you. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, you can see all of the hands are on the deck. All hands on deck. So... Uh, imagine if you are, you are at work and, you know, you need help. You're like, oh my God, I've got so much work. Okay, everybody, all hands on deck. Come on. Or um, if, <laughs> I don't know, imagine if, if you work in a supermarket and on Monday it's a public holiday. And so everybody's coming to the supermarket to buy sausages because they want to have a barbecue on a public holiday. And you're like, oh my God, there's, there's a thousand people here who want sausages, all hands on deck. Okay, okay. Um, port. Port is a place where you stop, right? A place where you stop. So, so um, you can use it to say, it's the next place I'm going to stop. My next, my next port of call. Next port of call. Because the verb to call means to, to, to stop. Right? I know that's very strange. So for example, you can say, I'm driving to I'm driving to Madrid and I'm going to call in at my friend's house. I'm going to stop at my friend's house. Sweet child, where do we go now? Oh. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> what are you singing? Sweet child of mine. <laughs> what a great voice. The voice of the century. <laughs> oh, I, the, you know, the, the truth is that it's impossible to listen to that song without singing. <laughs> Sweet chat. No. Wait, yeah, uh, I can't. <laughs> Guns and Roses, great song. Okay. Um, next port of call. Okay, the next place you stop. Okay. Uh, okay. Or. Okay. Or. Now, what happens when you when you put your or in the water? Okay. The or creates the or creates a disturbance in the water. The or the or creates turbulence. It creates movement. Right. So, stick your oar in. Stick in. Stick in your oar. Okay? Stick in your oar means to create, um, create a disturbance, create um, fluctuations, create... Um, 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 co consequences like for example um, imagine that I'm planning a holiday I'm planning a holiday and, and I'm very happy no problems and then 
my, I don't know, my, my mother-in-law, she comes and she sticks in her oar into my plan. She's sticking in her oar and creating all of this, you know, all of this, this movement, these problems. It's not good. Maybe if, if you work, maybe at the place that you work, there's somebody who sticks in their oar, right? Into your, into your things, huh? I hate these people sticking in the oar. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, one, one final one, the ocean. The ocean. Now... Now, now she's singing um, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the ocean is, is massive. The ocean is huge. And if, if you want to say, if you want to say that something is insignificant, that something is, ins you can say it's a drop in the ocean. A drop in the ocean. A drop in the ocean. It's it's nothing. It's just you know one one tiny drop in the ocean. It's like um, I <laughs> I want to buy a Ferrari, but I've only got ten euros, which is a drop in the ocean. <laughs> Rodrigo says a peanut in the ocean uh, is that a real idiom um, and CYFF or Sifrawi says um, water under the bridge another great idiom Nenushka says an ocean between us that's another great idiom uh, I like that one a lot um, um, yeah, so, okay, so uh, now f for me, this is the best way to learn idioms using, using a, a subject, some type of reference, go Corinthians, you know, like, um, some type of thing that you could just helps you to remember. Okay. Okay. So, um. And I I recommend this um this this book if you if you want a dictionary it's it's good as a reference really good to learn to learn no because it has no structure but as a reference it's good really good um, okay um, and wave well wave uh, okay let's um let's do let's continue with our little sorting game I, I quite enjoyed this game. Okay, um, okay, this is an interesting question, an interesting question. You have to put the animals, animals in order by the amount of time they can hold their breath. Do you know what that means to hold your breath? Um, okay, so you hold, <gasps> hold your breath, okay, and um, in English this is actually an idiom, another idiom, oh my god, um, if, if you do not expect something to happen quickly, if you think that something will take a long time, you can say, <laughs> don't hold your breath, <laughs> like for example, um, I'm waiting on some paperwork from the Spanish government, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> because if I did, <gasps> I'd be dead. <laughs> okay. Hi, Queenie Bird. What have you found? You have found the best place on the internet to learn English. That's what you found. <laughs> okay, so 
Let's put these animals in order. The length of time they can, they can hold their breath. So the first one is cockroach. Do you know what a cockroach is? You know those horrible insects that some of them can fly? Cockroach. There's a song. This is a song about the cockroach. They are immortal. It's true. Um, okay, the next one is... A platypus. Platypus. This is a very strange animal, only found in Australia. Um, in Spanish, they're called, um, I can never remember how to say it, ornitorinco. I think, I think that's correct. Um, in English, it's called platypus. Look, platypus, which is similar to another animal, right? The octo. Octopus. Octopus means eight legs. Eight legs. Octopus. Eight legs. Platypus means flat legs because it's flat. Platy means flat. Flat. Flat foot. Oh, anyway. Okay. Okay. Platypus. Um... Ooh, the next one is a whale. The next one is a dolphin. And finally, a penguin. Um, do you know the actor Benedict Cumberbatch. Some, some people call him Battlefield Counter-Strike, but... <laughs> so, Be Benedict Cumberbatch is... <laughs> um, he, 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 made, he made a documentary. Now, he's, he's a very famous um, British actor. He is um, Doctor Strange in, in the Marvel films, Doctor Strange. He, um, he made a documentary about penguins and he cannot pronounce the word penguin correctly. <laughs> ben for conduct. <laughs> he cannot pronounce the word penguin. If you listen to the documentary, he says, ping, 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 ping. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. There's, if you Google, Benedict Cumberbatch penguins, you'll see, it's hilarious. Okay, so, which one of these animals can hold their breath for the longest and which one for the shortest time? Okay, so, Carlos Torres says, whale, dolphin, penguin, platypus, cockroach. Natalia Cordoba says, whale, dolphin, platypus, penguin, cockroach. Okay. Okay. Um, whoa, whoa, any more? Any more guesses? Any more guesses to the correct order? Um, why? <laughs> why? Uh, who is this? Uh, Joe Sway says whale, dolphin, penguin, platypus, cockroach. <laughs> There's a guy here. He says he's been dating a whale. <laughs> well, big is beautiful. Queenie Bird says platypus, whale, penguin, dolphin, cockroach. Mm -hmm. um, Aimane says penguin, whale, dolphin, platypus, cockroach. <laughs> your, your mama. She's not on the list. Okay. Um, here's, the correct, here's the correct order. Uh, the first one is a whale. A whale can hold its breath for 80 minutes. Long time, 80 minutes. Number two is the cockroach. The cockroach can hold its breath for 45 minutes. Wow. 
Uh, number three, surprisingly, is the penguin. The penguin can hold its breath for 18 minutes. It's a long time. Then we have the platypus with 14 minutes. And finally, the dolphin. The dolphin only five minutes? What the hell, dolphin? A very disappointing performance from the dolphin. I thought the dolphin was more, you know, better at holding its breath. Very disappointing. And I'm not lying, see, it's science. Science. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, um, unfortunately, today's live class is only a very short one because, um, let me explain why. Because you see this? In five minutes, in five minutes, I have a class with a real student in, in reality. Um, but I have a really exciting announcement to make in the Facebook group later today. So if you're not in the Facebook group, please go and, and join. Um, it's amazing. Okay, um, I gotta go. Big love to you all. Uh, and I will see you again tomorrow for another live class. Um, it's been a pleasure, as always. Bye, guys. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. <laughs>